Can you all hear me okay? Okay. I can't hear myself up front as well as I usually can, and so I wanted to make sure that it was just a me thing and not a you thing. <laughs> it is a joy to worship with you this morning on this fifth Sunday of January, on this very cold <laughs> Sunday in January, but we are thankful for the sunshine that hopefully will warm the day as we go on. A few announcements this morning before we get started. Um, first is that UOW will be meeting this Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. Also, Anne's Closet could still use some things to help with, their, with our food pantry that you will find in the bulletin. Um, and also, our Wednesday night Bible study will be on Zoom for the next few weeks. We will return to in-person on March 9th. Anyone is welcome to join us in our Bible study. You don't have to have attended before to come this week. We will be diving deeper into our text that we will begin exploring today. I often joke that on Wednesday nights, I let you all talk because you get to hear what I think about the text on Sunday mornings. And so we hope that you will join us on Wednesday night. Are there any other announcements this morning? Most importantly, know that if this is your first time here or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And it is a joy to worship with you this morning. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Offer God your worship and your praise. Before God comes, God is God is God is God is Offer Christ your love and your devotion. Offer the Spirit your gratitude and your thanksgiving. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We will offer God our worship and our praise. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together God of Love and God of Power, hymn number 578.
understanding as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. of the cacophony of voices that crush our spirit and deny our calling. Voices that say, who do you think you are? We come to hear your voice of affirmation. We come to hear your voice calling us to be and do what you have called us to be and do. Let this time of worship quiet our fears, soothe our bruised souls, and energize us for ministry in and with your beloved world. Let faith abide. Let hope abide. Let love abide. Here in this sanctuary, here in our community, here in our world, but most of all, here in us. You may remain seated as we sing together, O Young and Fearless Prophet, hymn number 444. <laughs>
verse 30. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said to them, said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over the, all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except the widow of Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the temple were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. This morning we pick up where we left off last week. And we hear the rest of the story of Jesus' rejection at Nazareth. Last week, we found Jesus reading scripture in the temple after he has been urged into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit after his baptism. He then returns to Galilee at the urging of the Spirit to formally begin his ministry. In Luke, Jesus' ministry begins with him reading the words from Isaiah, saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. As he sit, that sits down, with all the eyes upon him, he simply says, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today we pick up just after Jesus has said those words. We hear what Jesus says after all of the eyes were fixed on him. He has said these grace-filled words. And as he continues talking, Luke's account almost feels like Jesus is doing a little bit of prodding to get to the rejection. The crowd's initial reaction is one of wonder, asking the question, is this not Joseph's son? It almost feels like if he had stopped there, everything would have been fine. <clears throat> Instead, Jesus chooses not to stop. He goes on to expand upon his mission and begins recalling the actions of Elijah and Elisha and is run out of town. Part of this text feels disconnected. Jesus begins by saying, Doctor, cure yourself. Do here also in your hometown the things that you did at Capernaum, and no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But after these statements, after he says these things that will lead to his rejection, Jesus reveals what is truly at stake in this encounter. 
the truth. The truth is revealed in ways in which unexpected outsiders figure prominently as models of faith in the Israelite history. Last week, I shared the words from Robert Parham that continue to resonate with our text today. He says, Jesus said the gospel was for the poor and the oppressed, speaking to those at the margins of society. Jesus announcing that he came to liberate from real oppressive structures the marginalized, the impoverished, the war captives, the poor in health, the political prisoners. Jesus came to turn the economic structures upside down, instituting the year of Jubilee when crushing debts were forgiven and slaves were freed. Jesus, after saying these three statements, Jesus tells the stories of the widow in Sidon and Naaman the Syrian, and those who have gathered become increasingly uncomfortable. <clears throat> the way he begins telling this story feels almost antagonistic. But they serve a different purpose than just increasing discomfort. They demonstrate that prophets have had a history of reaching beyond the Israelites to welcome an outsider. The widow was obedient and faithful to God, willing to give the last of what she had so that her household might receive a blessing from God. Naaman was initially resistant to Elisha's prophetic instructions, but eventually followed them and was healed. Both of these examples represented the extreme other to those in the synagogue, and it served to drive home the point that the good news of Jesus Christ is intended for Jew and Gentile alike. The fulfillment of scripture is challenging and frightening especially when it is difficult to include and identify those who are perceived as outsiders. But the beauty of Christ's mission and God's narrative throughout the world is that the mission and narrative are always unfolding in our midst, even when we are unable or unwilling to see them. God's mission and narrative continue beyond our own walls. When we hear the news that the good news of Christ is for people far beyond who we think, we begin to feel some tension. This isn't common to just us in today's time either. Some of the Jewish Christians of Luke's day felt like the Nazarenes listening to Jesus read the scripture. They were pleased with the hometown boy makes good, but were not so comfortable with the idea that the glorious prophecies of their tradition, the good news, the year of the Lord that Isaiah spoke about, would apply to everyone. They wanted to hold back this light that Jesus wanted to share with the world. Jesus' revelation that the good news is for the world, not just those of us who have known Christ our whole lives, shouldn't offend us or make us want to run Jesus off a cliff. Jesus is indeed bringing good news to the poor, sight to the blind, all of this today in our midst. And we are invited to be part of it. And by being part of it, we are able to see that this good news is not a threat like it could be perceived. It is not a threat 
but an invitation into the life-giving, earth-shattering, expansive, and holy love of God. Jesus is bringing about a new and radical tradition. And he is bringing about change, whether we are part of the change or relate more to the people of Nazareth, ready to run Jesus off a cliff. The good news that Christ brings does turn us upside down and invites us to view who God is and who the other is in new ways. And there is deep beauty in becoming witnesses to the outsider becoming insiders. The returning of sight to the blind and the year of the Lord's favor. The truth that Jesus reveals is that our models of faith are not those we necessarily assume them to be. We are invited to look past ourselves, past our own traditions, to see the places where Christ is revealing himself to us and to the world. We are invited to dismantle the status quo and the stereotypes that define the religious and social boundaries. And doing so requires vulnerability and courage to put aside our own assumptions and truly witness to the saving work that Christ is doing in our midst. The fulfillment of scripture is challenging and frightening, but it is also fulfilling and life-giving and beautiful when we are willing to be part of its fulfillment. And so may we always see that Christ's good news is always an invitation to each of us to be outsider to the world. May we be part of this transformation together. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering.
come to our time of prayer this morning, our prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. Are there other joys and concerns we would like to share as a community this morning? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this space, for this community that we are able to gather together to worship your holy name. Oh God, strengthen us, empower us to see beyond our own limitations, to see where you are working in the world, to see where you are welcoming each and every one of us. To see each person as beloved as you have called them. Oh God, we lift up to you all of our prayers. Prayers for healing and hope, for peace and unity, for comfort. Oh God, you have heard our prayers, ones that we share aloud and ones that remain deep in our hearts, for you have searched us and know us and called us good. Oh God, be with us. Strengthen us. Encourage us. Pick us back up when we fall short so that we might be part of the inbreaking of your kingdom on earth. That we might live into our full calling as your beloved children. That we might get rid of classifications of outsider and insider. And now, as your beloved children, we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 672, God be with you till we meet again.
from this place, we do so with the reminder that Christ has invited each of us into his mission. And so we go now with the peace of Christ in the name of the creator, the redeemer, and the sustainer. Amen. Amen. 